Hello everyone, I8-0386-SX. Today on the tap, we are going to rebuild a retro computer. One of the biggest uh, issues that come up, or uh, if not the biggest issue, I, I don't know where it lands exactly, but one of the glaring issues anyway, on retro equipment, is the lack of working floppy drives. Now, if you're new to this world or don't uh, have a huge understanding of uh, retro computing, you'll probably say, hey, I can just boot off of a flash drive. Well, hold on a minute. I'll take my LTE Elite. And oh, no USBs there. No USBs there. They're never on the front of the computer anyway. So that idea's out. And, oh, hold on. Somebody that's in the tween world, the term I borrowed from IBM Museum, I can just go boot from a floppy. While it's demonstrated there, no CD-ROM. If I said floppy, well, that's, some of those more likely and not are dead. So that leaves us with, you can only boot off of a hard drive on many of these machines. And for somebody that's not creative, or maybe they didn't think about it, there, there's a lot of variables in place and whatnot. So, but there is some good news. It is possible to restore some of these machines using means of a CF compact flashcard. Now, because I am such a stupid glutton for punishment, and we know what this channel's about, we're going to make it interesting. We're going to do this on a compact. The early 90s or mid-90s compact. Now, anybody that's worked with them extensively, you know that there is one really stupid decision that compact made in the early to mid-90s, and... If you work with them, you know what I'm talking about. And I'm going to bring up that little quarry right now. It's that stupid 2, 3 megabyte, might be 4 or 5 megabytes on the later machines. It's that stupid diagnostics partition. I'm going to be blunt. I don't have an answer for putting it on these cards or replacement hard drive outside of, say, borrowing a friend's compact or finding another compact of the era to make that diagnostics partition. To date, that is the only solution I can tell you to get that setup utility in the, we'll call it the God intended way. I do have a workaround for that though, so not all hope is lost. You're not gonna get the little white rectangle where you can press F10 and go into the BIOS, but bear with me. I have a solution for you. So we're going to go run through that right now using VMware Workstation. And you're going to go tell me, well, we could do all this for free in VirtualBox. Well, that is correct. But I know for a fact that VMware Workstation does work for what I want to do. So we're going to use that. We're going to uh, go ahead and use that particular tool to uh, do this today. Uh, VMware Workstation, I have found, is a little bit more user-friendly in terms of working directly with storage devices than VirtualBox isn't, unfortunately, but uh, that's what you get with a free product, I suppose. Uh, before we uh, go any further whatsoever, there are some very important things you must know. The computer itself that you are using, I'm using a modern HP Windows 10, you must have local admin rights to the machine or you're not going to get anywhere. You're going to get stuck halfway, and that's going to be it. As far as the card I am using, I am using a standard SanDisk 512 megabyte compact flash. You can use one gigs, you can use two gigs. I believe you can either go as high as four gigs. You can go as low as 32 megs. But each uh, CF card will act differently. Uh, generally speaking, uh, in the industrial ones will work great. This, these uh, 
no frill sand disc ones I've had extremely good luck with once I worked out all the crazy kinks so those are always good the Cisco ones work great once you work out the kinks so and last but not least you need some kind of operating system to put on your CF car choice and that could be DOS 6 in our case you could have the basic format C colon S and you could literally just have a command interpreter and and call it a day and you can copy your Windows 95 directory your 98 install files and call it a day there's really no wrong answer as long as you can boot into the system but there are some fine print here if you have an LTE 5000 this tutorial is not necessary or at least bits and pieces of it aren't the compact diagnostic utility piece of it does not apply they use a totally different BIOS and smartly enough they didn't put that stupid uh, partition on the hard drive so if you have a 5000 well you can still join along for the fun uh, most of this is still relevant if you have an LTE light forget it no CF cards no SD cards don't even bother you risk the chance of blowing out a hard disk controller even if you can get the damn thing to work just don't do it you need the approved storage for those so forget that so this this tutorial especially with this compact diagnostics this is the LTE Elite the second generation Conturas the first generation Conturas don't need it because it has the BIOS uh, right on the motherboard and well that's the other reason why you don't do this in a light uh, that has the BIOS right on the motherboard like God intended and a lot of armadas will have the same issue with the diagnostics I'll put all that in the description and uh, buckle up it's gonna be rough but we shall begin and one other thing I gotta do is I'm gonna try and put these uh, compact diagnostics into one happy little uh, package real quick with win image this will allow you to create um, a custom uh, floppy images as well and let's see if it will let me do this we're gonna try see if this will fit I don't know well that's fun so we're going to have to All right, let's try that again. I thought for sure that would work. Should have worked. Oh well, life goes on. Come on. Well, that's not going to help us. Well, the diagnostics don't work, so we're going to likely blow that part away. I just need a little bit more space. That's what's so annoying about this. There, that should help us a little bit. Get rid of this new folder too. And I know I'm a little bit unprepared here for this one, but well, that's what life is about sometimes. Okay, no problem. So we got our compact utilities. This is a pseudo on the fly. And if you are looking for this uh, particular uh, driver pack, if you will, from Compaq, I think it's SP2054. I'll put some of this in the description. Okay, well, maybe it doesn't come with a hard drive. Okay, who cares? So, now VMware Workstation 
is open. We're gonna close it. And now that I talked about the hardware, and all I'm using is a standard Jeff Bezos special CF reader, one of those multi-readers. And there we go. Probably could use a VGA capture device here, but well, that's no fun. So first thing is first, you wanna make sure that your CF card is completely clean. So we're going to do that using disk part. Measure twice, cut once, select disk one and clean. Now, if you get this uh, device is not ready or access denied, I know it breaks the rules of definition of insanity. Do it again. There you go. So we got that squared away. That's the easy part. Let's close this out. We are done with command prompt. And VMware Workstation, we will create a new virtual machine. We're gonna go to Custom Advanced. And I think all this default stuff will be okay. We're gonna find out in a little bit. We'll install the operating system later because we don't have an ISO. You'll want to go find DOS, in my case, uh, or whatever operating system you do want to install. It, it's here, it doesn't really matter all that much, but keep it in the ballpark. Defaults here are fine. Defaults here are fine. Defaults here are fine. We don't need a network connection because, well, we're not going to actually do anything with that. Uh, because it probably won't do us any good in reality. Defaults, IDE, you've got to select IDE. And here, this is the very important part. You have to use a physical disk for advanced users. And this is where you need the admin rights. And I got a problem with my camera here, apparently it's... All right, so, you want to find the physical device and disk part uh, told us this earlier and we're gonna use physical device one use entire disk defaults are fine here and we gotta customize some hardware here uh, there's a very important piece here floppy and we'll get it ready here you just gotta go find your image cool finish and remember where it made that uh, that VM because we got to do one very important thing here and this is if you skip this step especially on a compact or some legacy systems your boot volume will not work all right, so I think it's this one. I usually have the file extensions uh, showing even if it's a known file type, but I do not in this case. I created this uh, user for this video, and that is not the right directory. Although we're kind of close to what we need to be here, so I think it's this one. Let's open this one up. I think you're looking for the VMX folder or VMX file, which is your uh, configuration for the VM in question. Yep, this is the right one. And I don't know what I just barked about. Hope I didn't make a random change, so I'm just gonna go into it again. And if you open something once with it, so now you have to go to the bottom of the document here 
and you have to, what we're going to do here is uh, we're going to force this thing into the BIOS. It's a one command here. And I go look it up real quick here because I honestly forgot. Okay, so I'm not finding it in a hurry here, and I hate to go do a magic of video editing over something so silly, but we might be doing it here. Oh, here we go. So at the bottom here, you're going to put in this very important command. And if it's anything like VMware, uh, vCenter, or all those uh, actual server-grade products, it is going to be case-sensitive. So I am not going to going to pull any punches with this. We're going to do everything by case. And there you go. So let's save it. And let's go back into VMware Workstation and find our file. And yep, you'll want to do this. Let's power on. There we go. So it did exactly what I wanted it to do. Now we want to go hover our mouse into this, this window. We go to primary master 512 megabytes. We're going to change this uh, variable to user. We can do that by the plus and minus keys. This is very, very important, especially in compacts. Very, very important. If you don't do this, it's all for naught. And you're going to probably ask, how did I find this answer? Well, trial and error. That's the best I can tell you on that one. Trial and error. If you have a legacy system like an early Pentium 3 or Pentium 1, where you can do the old style cylinders, heads, and sectors and have it come up automatically, that will help you out. In the case... I did have that, so I am going to put that in. And the white box system said this was 993 cylinders, 16 heads, 63 sectors. On a compact, you take two cylinders away. And again, the plus and minus functionality is bringing this up or down. And I can't just type the number in or I haven't figured that out yet I'm not sure which one and we're getting there Almost there, we're now in the 900s. Oh, I was one off. Oh, okay, that's weird. And we'll change this to 16. I'm not exactly sure if you can tell within my documentation here. I know it's, I took this with the flash on, but that's my, uh, that's straight from a machine with a working floppy drive, a working compact. But regardless, you are now saved. So let us go save this and we will go into DOS and install DOS. Cool, just the standard stuff. It's just standard C DOS. I know it's not the easiest to see here. Let me help you out just a little bit on that. There we go. And it's asking for disk two. So, oh, I don't bounce things around anymore. 
you want to go right click on your VM and you want to go to removable devices and go browse for it or if you have most of the directory path in there like I do all I'm going to do is change this one to a two because that's what I have going on And same drill for disk three. What I recommend you do is maybe not so much do the entire operating system, but you know, like the system disks that DOS can create to have literally just the command interpreter or whatever it wants to call it. Command interpreter, if you will. I think that's what it calls it when it can't find it. <laughs> And it says to remove all disks from the drives and press enter. Now we will do that. And we should be able to boot into DOS without trouble. So far, so good. And there we are. So that's the easy part. So now, how are we going to copy that compact stuff in? Well, we'll show you. There's one or two ways you can do this. You can A, either uh, shut down the VM, copy the folder over, that does certainly work. Or B, you're going to do what I did since I put all that aggravation into it. We're going to uh, do it right here in the VM by virtue of the floppy image we just made. So like I said earlier in the video, if you have an LTE 5000 or first generation Contura or an LTE Lite, you don't need to do this part. This, uh, it doesn't use this uh, BIOS at all, so you don't need to worry about it. All right, so let's go browse for a floppy image is uh, I think this is it there we go no problem no sweat and now we'll just do a simple copy as soon as I get my uh, uh oh we are not connected. <laughs> I don't think we are. Uh, yep, we are not connected. So let's uh, try to fix that. Great try. Hmm. Okay, I don't know why all of a sudden it has a bird over that, but we shall see what the problem is. And I found sometimes if you shut the machine down, which is exactly what we're going to do. We're just going to shut it down, but sometimes you have to load vCenter and put it back in. Stuff does happen. So, but the good news is now your CF card is free. I did try to do something here. I think there is a utility out there that will allow VMware Workstation to be the exclusive property of this uh, CF card while it is in use. I haven't found that out either way to be sure. Right, there we are. Voila. So we are now sent, and we're going to do the good old safe eject, and now comes our test. And we're not going to use the concerto motherboard that's behind us, because I don't have an AC adapter for that thing yet. Uh, 
that's uh, still sitting in uh, overseas over in Australia yet, I believe. I don't even think it made it to the boat yet. Or whatever the plane or whatever the mode of transportation of choice is. If it's gonna ship sitting on a shipping container, <laughs> we might not be doing anything for that long time. Now here we go, we have our 512 megabyte CF card. Here we go. Voila. Now a little word of advice here. If you're replacing, if the CF card or storage that you're using is smaller than what was in there before, like say for example you had an 810 megabyte drive in your 90s compact and you're replacing it with a 512 or something smaller than that 810, turn the machine on, let it complain that there's no disk, accept the defaults. Once you have determined that the machine has doesn't think there's a hard drive in it anymore then you can put in your CF card and the magic should work Do -do -do. and okay so we're gonna be at war with the reflection we are at war with cabling and power. Ah, no worries folks, this one's just unplugged. And I believe it did power on just now. And off to the races. And just like that, we are in the DOS. And there we are. Now, if you were just to accept the defaults in VMware Workstation, where we change those hard drive variables, you would not get this. You would not get a starting DOS. You would say missing operating system or invalid operating system and something like that and the machine would be unusable. So now if you uh, In the Compaq, LTE Elite, the Contura, later Contura, the Arrows, some of them Armadas. You still have the issue of the Compaq Utilities. I think I called the folder. Uh, let's see. Nope. Okay. So, to go into this, go test.com slash p slash And it turns out we do need the diagnostic piece of it, so that's my fault. So we'll try that again. So with the magic of video editing, I'm going to uh, take the CF card out of this machine and then get the correct files on there. It's apparently I removed a little too much. And then we'll try this again. So be back. All right, so. I got those uh, files copied over. We're going to help things out a little bit here because we do uh, have a lot of memory for this machine. All right, so now let's try this again. CPQ DAG. Yep, so let's go to test.com. We're not going to a website. And 
now we have something a little bit more valuable. Utilities provided to do the testing. So let's go to computer setup. Sometimes it'll complain about used storage. Don't worry about it. But you can get into at least the compact portable setup and work on it back like so. And we'll exit that. We'll uh, security management. I'm not sure what that's about. Power management. You can work with the power settings on this machine, so that's good. Uh, let's see. Computer checkup does work. And exit the diagnostics. The only thing that I know it doesn't work, well, the remote call thing ain't going to work regardless. If you try to do it with the diagnostics partition, that's what you ultimately get. And the machine will reboot. And there you are. You are in the C prompt. Now you can take the CF card out of this machine. You can work on it on a modern workstation and uh, work on it whatever way you want and put your files on there and off to the races. Just to show you that this is not a tailor to one machine thing, we'll make it very interesting. Now, it's not interesting as it once was. Out of this machine. And for those that are wondering what kind of hard drive caddy I have in here, it is this guy here, the Cyba or Siba 2.5 IDE dual compact flash drive. Little disclaimer, you can't do the dual on these machines. No matter what kind of volume you put in there, you'll get it. 233 megabytes in secondary and it just just doesn't work you can read but you can't write kind of useless and the bad news is I have misplaced some of my adapters oh, there they are but you can certainly use these guys too that you can get them on Amazon for next to nothing and for my next trick we're going to stick this thing in a Contura Bear with me while I put this thing in the Contura. And on this, uh, if you're doing this, make sure this side is sticking up. The So the bottom half of the hard drive would be sticking up towards you. I know these contours were the value machine at the time, but I really like a lot of things about them. Who would have thought that these were better in the longevity department? The floppies still work. The batteries are easier to rebuild on them. And putting a compact flash IDE in it is no sweat at all.
and there you go. And that's it. We're good to go. Uh, we'll just do a... If your floppy drive does work, go get the floppies and go do this correctly. Okay, well, the Compact Contura setup is a little bit different from the Elite, so I, that's a variable I was not anticipating, but that's okay. But rest assured, that's what you got to do. And that's uh, pretty much it. And I'm going to tell you right now, there, there is no such thing as a one-size-fits-all solution, especially with these CF cards uh, in whatever machine you're using. I know IBMs are a little bit different in the terms of what they use. Uh, and I'm not sure about Toshiba or Dell or any of them. I haven't hardly ever messed with any of their retro stuff, so I, your guess is as good as mine on that. Uh, but I can tell you right there, that's uh, some of the nuances and limitations with Compaq, anyway. And there's a, another YouTuber, mentioned him again, I met, mentioned him in the past, Retro Tech Chris. His YouTube channel, he did, uh, was nice enough to pull a CD from archive.org and put it up on a website. Of course, that'll go in the description as well. And... You can get whatever file drivers you need for that and copy it to your CF card and uh, go to town. As I get other compact flash cards in, I will uh, be putting the values that you need to put in your compact into this because, well, I do have working floppies, so I can do that for you without issue. Now, if you're one of those people, I don't want to mess with all this horse pooey. Just, uh... Can you build one of these for me? Yeah, the answer is yes. I will, as long as there's demand, I can build CF cards tailored for these type of compacts, provided I have a compact that's ballpark within what you're trying to do. I can put the setup utility on there for you and do it correctly, because, well, I have LTE Elites and Contouros with working floppies, so those are a few options. As I find out more, I'll dump it in the description. Uh, if you have any questions, comments, or concerns, constructive criticism, you have a comment section for that. And if you're one of those that want to just purchase a pre-configured CF card or semi-pre-configured, you need to look for an eBayer 80486SX. Uh, thank you for watching. Have a good one.